Well, I took up the cross You left for me Took up the cross mm, That set me free From trouble time The victory Took up the cross that set me free. Hey, we're finishing Philippians this week. That's pretty exciting, right? It's kind of fun because the elders split up chapters. For I guess we're running out of four chapter um, books of the Bible, but we, we could always get some extra elders. What do you think? We can do longer books of the Bible. <laughs> so this is Philippians 4, and this is part 2. The exciting conclusion. Um, to live a life of commitment, of contentment. God made you. You're very special. You're very distinctive. You're an individual that's different from all other people. God made you the way you are on purpose. For a purpose. He's got He's got a plan for your life. He know he knew what he's doing when he knit you together in your mother's womb. He had a plan. In this day and age, every day has its challenges. I found that if I start each day with a little bit of scripture and spend a little honest conversation time with, with my Savior, Jesus Christ, that I can usually make it through the morning. And then if by middle of the day I'm not hiding from God, or apologizing for all the things I've done. It's a good day. My goal is just to be available. My goal is to let God schedule the day, plan the day. Uh, I used to say that I wrote a list in the morning of the things I was going to do each day in pencil, and then I'd give God the eraser. But we're in a more technical time now, so I got a cell phone it's right here. So I've got, I got, a, I got a list here, I got to look it up. So I've got um, calendar. Notes, contacts, texts, and emails right here. That's, that's what makes up my day. Somebody asked me, what are you doing today? The first thing I do is go to the calendar and say, okay, that's what I'm doing. Otherwise, I could just kind of wander off. The exciting thing is that as old as God is, he's pretty tech savvy. Because he can take all the stuff that's in my phone, and he can organize it, pretty organized, into a day that is meaningful and helpful. I rely on God to take confusion out of my day. I rely on God to make it a productive day in his sight. Matthew 5.5 5 says, you're blessed 
when you are content with just who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment you find yourself proud owners of everything that can't be bought. What, what is that? I'm not sure. It sounds like really good stuff, though, to me. Joy, peace, love, wisdom, patience. So what if I'm a little overweight? So what if my tennis game has no game? can't even remember the last time I held a racket. My wife and I, my wife's right down front there. My wife and I, we don't even own a car right now. Thanks to our fantastic son, he loans us one of his. My retirement plan is not to. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but I really enjoy what I'm doing. Um, so you can't buy a life like that. Got two boys now that are grown up. They're doing pretty good. Got no complaints. Um, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong when you're raising boys. Um, fortunately, I don't think any of that happened. What more could you want? Matthew 23, 12 says, Do you want to stand out? Then step down. Be a servant. If you puff yourself up, you'll get the wind knocked out of you. But if you're content to simply be yourself, your life will count for plenty. People always seem to want to be somebody that they're not. God created us to be exactly who we are. I have to think it makes him sad when he sees us go to the links that we go to to change who we are and become somebody else. We do cosmetic surgery. We uh, change the way we speak. Um, we alter our consciousness with drugs and stuff like that. We go to, we go to um, professionals who want to analyze why we feel the way we feel. We're always seeking to change the person that God made us. You know, God thinks we're a masterpiece. He made us exactly the way he wanted to make us. And I've heard it said that God doesn't make accidents. So you are exactly who God wanted you to be. If, uh, if, if a guy was perfectly happy with who he was, if he didn't try to do anything different than be who God intended him to be, he would be the most interesting guy in the world. Sorry, I didn't say that right, did I? He's the most interesting guy in the world. Ephesians 2.10 says, God has made us what we are. In Christ Jesus, God made us to do good works, which God planned in advance for us to live our lives doing. Again, we're God's masterpieces. We have a purpose in life. We have a reason for being here. We were put here on this world on purpose. So there may be a time when you're walking around and you're going, gosh, nothing's going right. Nobody loves me. Um, I can't do anything like the way I should. But God sees a different thing happening. He's got a plan for your life. And if you allow it, him to work through you, that's what's going to happen. 
Last week we read, I have learned to be content in all circumstances. That was Philippians 11, 411. Paul was a guy who came from a family of means. He was a Roman citizen, and he basically just forgot all that. He stepped away from his upbringing and became a guy who spent a lot of time in prison. And that was God's plan for his life. I mean, Paul wasn't a victim of circumstances because the circumstances were God's circumstances. God was in control. Paul knew it. I'm sure he wasn't overly happy with some of the things that happened. But he understood that he had a role to play in the early formation of the church and that he was instrumental in doing what God needed done. Even if he couldn't see the big picture, even if he didn't know that thousands of years later we'd be talking about what he did. At the time that Paul was walking the way he was walking with the Lord, the Bible wasn't written yet. Churches weren't built. Nothing that we know existed. You had the temple. You had some scrolls, Old Testament scrolls in those temples. Nobody else could really have the Word of God in their house or anything like that. And so... He had no idea where this was all going to lead. But he says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. He had to wonder, even in his time, what are we going to think? What is God's will for our life? mysterious maybe you don't know so Paul answered that he goes he we, he wants to be sure that his brothers and sisters the Philippians continue their practice of helping others they help their church members they help their community and they may have been the first mission uh, church that supported missions. They supported Paul when he was in other countries. Not just because Paul wasn't encouraging them, just because they were helping others, but that he knew that the blessing that God would bestow on them was great. And he wanted to make sure they didn't miss that. Philippians 4, 15 through 19, Paul wrote... As you know, the, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. Even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. At the moment, I have all I need, and more. I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent me with Aphrodite. Even they are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. God's giving is eternal. Giving benefits not only the receiver of the gift, but the giver as well. You may not realize 
that as a believer, you have an account in heaven earning you interest. If you want to check out the rates, you can look at the uh, parable of the sower in Matthew 13, 8. God's economy is not like earthly economy. These days, you're lucky to get an 1% interest, yeah. But in the parable of the sower, the sower, his reward was 100 or more times what he originally sowed on good soil. Every gift that you bestow on someone else will be recorded in heaven. The downside is you don't earn any interest if you don't invest. Your generosity is enjoyed by God. There are two kinds of people in the world, a giver or a taker. Jesus says it's more blessed to give than receive. The more generous you are, the happier you'll be. If we want to experience God's bounteous generosity, then we need to be generous ourselves. And the same God who takes care of me, this is Paul again, will supply all your needs from his generous riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19. So today's the day To make God your God. Sure, I I grew up and I knew stories about God, knew stories about Jesus. Um, Didn't pay much attention to the Holy Spirit. Um, They were stories. I knew the stories. They were pretty good stories. I enjoyed the stories. They were just stories. They had nothing to do with my life. They didn't affect my plans. They didn't change my view of things going on. They were just some stories. I had other stories I read too. But one day, at the encouragement of the assistant principal, uh, uh, pastor, yeah, the assistant pastor here, back in 1980, I understood for the first time that they weren't just stories, that they weren't just interesting things that you can read to pass the time, but that the things of the Bible, the stories of the Bible that I had read, the concept of God, that could be a personal thing. I could have a relationship with God. I could speak to God, and God would answer when he wants to. That Jesus could be my Savior, that I could have something that I didn't know was possible. I could know that I was going to heaven someday. I didn't believe that. I was pretty sure I was going to hell. I believed that because of the things I'd done. I don't know how you believe in hell and not believe in heaven, but that's kind of where I was at. Luke 21, 12, 21 says, Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. So there's a choice on the table. Are you going to be a fool or a wise man? And just because you have few earthly riches 
doesn't let you off the hook. If you squander your days in pursuit of things of this world and not on things of heaven, then the question will be the same. Are you going to be a fool or a wise man? Philippians 4.21 ends the chapter. It says, Give my greetings to each of God's holy people, all who belong to Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send you their greetings, and all the rest of God's people send you greetings too, especially those in Caesar's household. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Coming from a guy who's in prison. Would you guys mind standing up for just a second? Raise your hands. Repeat after me. Father God, take back my life. Use it for what you intend. Let me serve you. Serve you by serving others. Amen.